Scary times for investors. The Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P 500 adding to their October losses. The tech-heavy NASDAQ, in fact, on pace for its worst month in a decade. This as we find out the economy is on gangbusters, growing 3.5 percent in the third quarter. That's the fastest pace and much fastest pace in four years and for consumers and faster than what everyone expected. So how do we put these together? Let's ask a market watcher, Melissa Armo, and Seaport Securities founder, Teddy Weisberg. And Teddy, I got to start with you because you and I have gone through these before, and I'll never forget years ago when it was much worse than this. I said, what are you doing? He said, I just bought another seat. You, so so in, the, in the teeth of death, you, you faced it bravely. Should we be doing the same thing again? Well, I mean, I've seen so many near-death death experiences, Charles, that after a while it gets a little boring. But the <laughs> fact is, it hurts every time, you know, and, and unfortunately, somehow or other, you never learn from your mistakes. Uh, you know, I'm not quite sure where we are here, but clearly this is, a, in, a, in a big sense, this is the case of sell on the good news, you know, buying the bad news. And the good news is the economy's doing fine, so what are we going to do for an encore? We're faced with, with rising interest rates, uh, you know, a lot of geopolitical and domestic uh, unknowns, uh, and plus the midterm election. So I don't know what happens in the next two weeks, but until we get these midterms behind us, basically our position is we've been taking some money off the table mm -hmm. and just keeping our powder dry. Melissa, it's very, very expensive and very dangerous trying to catch a falling knife. Melissa, uh, there's a lot of guessing out there, and there are a variety of uh, potential issues and problems. But we did learn the economy is a juggernaut right now. In fact, it's, it's great, but it's great and it's not inflationary. The Fed should stay away. This should be allowed to go on for some time, and that would be the perfect backdrop for perhaps a market rebound. Well, that's one of the things that was good about today. Let's look at the bright side. First of all, it's Friday, Halloween weekend. Second of all, the market held the uptrend. Even though we opened lower this morning, we rallied today and we really held. And Google and Amazon did not report well last night. But you know what? They didn't bomb. Thank God they didn't bomb because they could have been even worse. We could have had a huge sell-off. So look to the bright side. Next week, Apple reports on November 1st at night. And if Apple is good, then the market could turn around and recover. We want to see the Dow get over 26,000. And this GDP number, one of the most important things in this in this number in this report was that consumer spending is up so what does that tell you it tells you that people are spending more money now why either they're spending money they had saved that they've decided they want to spend or guess what they have more money because of the tax savings and Teddy you know the consumer is two-thirds of the economy and and they seem to be smarter wealthier but intent to perhaps spend a lot of money could, they, could that be the key? I mean, of all the things you talked about, the geopolitics, check, and all of the rest, right. ultimately, could the consumer be the one that saves this rally and continues this great uh, economic boom we're in the middle of? Well, I'm, I can't argue with the positive uh, aspects of the consumer, but, Charles, I hate, I hate to be a little more cynical than your other guest. I mean, I enjoy her enthusiasm, and, and I'm a closet bull, and I do think the glass is half full, but the reality is the stock market never lies, and stocks never lie. We, yes, you know, we could find a bottom in here someplace, and I certainly hope we do. we still got a couple of months to go to try to salvage the year. But on balance, we have spent the entire year running in place, and we haven't met a whole lot of progress. And uh, I just think these are all the signs of a market that's rolling over. It doesn't happen in a day. It doesn't happen in a week. It's a process that will play out over months and years. Don't forget, we're coming off a seven or eight, maybe nine year, what we call a bull market, and we can argue about that. Sure, but sure. Cer but certainly we've had an uptrend, which started with the trading lows of March of 09, and you can go back to uh, November of 07 and take the trading highs. And either way you look at it, the market's had a big percentage It's move. had a huge party. It's had but, a huge party. Uh, but but, but we, things don't go on forever. They, they don't necessarily go on forever, Melissa, but uh, it's interesting that they would end now when things are getting better, not worse, economically. Exactly. If you're bullish, then my advice is stay bullish. And if you're bearish, I'd have to ask yourself why. Look at how strong the economy is. And now Trump's talking about doing tax reform 202 or whatever he's going to call it. I mean, I don't see any reason why you would sell if you were bullish on this economy. True, we've been running up. But no, we can't go higher forever and ever and ever without pulling back. But that's exactly what you've seen from February until August. We were sideways. Then we broke out and the Dow made new highs. There's no 
no reason at all why the market wouldn't continue rallying. What the what the market needs, and I'll tell you this one last thing to end your weekend here. I would like to see a resolution with China for the tariff issue before that new rate goes into effect on January 1st. So if that happens, mm, yeah. the market would explode. You would you would see a huge rally. Right. And so that, we're waiting to see when that's going to happen. And that, that could happen. That, it could, but I mean, well, I think we'll be just happy that those two elected <laughs> leaders are meeting uh, and then go from there. Teddy, I got 15 seconds. I've never heard you this bearish. You're suggesting a long-term bear market, possibly? No, what I'm what I'm suggesting is the markets have always been a forward-looking, not a trailing indicator. You can't argue with anything your other guest says, except that everything she says, in my opinion, to a large degree, is already priced into this market. We're now going back to normalization, whatever that is. Interest rates are going up. Money is leaving equities, going into, in, into treasuries or, or money market instruments. It's not the end of the world. The low-hanging fruit, though, All right, has been picked. Thank you both picked. very much, folks. President Trump on tape.